Now, Florida Senator Marco Rubio had a strong debate performance tonight, and immediately after the debate was over, I asked him about it. Watch this. All right, joining us now on the debate stage is Senator Marco Rubio. How are you, Senator? Good, good to see you again. Good. Uh, how'd you feel about the debate? I felt great. You know, first of all, I want to thank Fox for doing it. They always do a great job. You guys always do a great job of putting these on. And look, this is an important thing. We're 93 hours away from the caucus night. A lot of the people here are going to go caucus. A lot of people in Iowa watching tonight. This is important. Hillary Clinton winning, or Bernie Sanders for that matter, would be a disaster for America. I was glad you said that. You know, you started the debate out very strong saying, what is at stake here? Right. And, I, you know, at the end of the day, there's so much infighting going on now. You have your supporters, you have Jeb supporters, you have Trump supporters, you have Cruz supporters. But at the end of the day, one of you guys are going to win and you're going to be up against either Hillary, unless she gets indicted, um, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, or Elizabeth Warren, we don't know. But it's going to basically be a third term of Obama. That's correct. And if you think about what that means, it means that Obamacare stays permanently. It means all those executive orders that violate the Constitution. It means two to three Supreme Court justices like Sonia Sotomayor, or Lenny Kagan, maybe four. I mean, the balance of the court right. and therefore the Constitution for the next decade or beyond is at stake. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force continues to get cut. Uh, our foreign policy, our standing in the world continues to diminish. The consequences are extraordinary. And so we have to win. Am, am I wrong? As I watch watched you tonight, and I thought one of your more passionate moments was, you are a hawk on national defense and on defeating ISIS. Absolutely. In other words, you, you are taking, I think, the strongest position that America's got to be proactive, get on the ground, take out ISIS, and make the world a safer place. Right. What does that mean? What do, how far do we have to go? Because As far as we have to. I mean, yeah. ISIS cannot win. This is not a group that you can reach an accommodation with. I mean, they yeah. don't have ambassadors. They want to conquer the world. They are willing to kill anyone that's in their way. They have to be defeated. That will not happen without American leadership. ISIS will only grow stronger, not weaker, if we leave them alone. Only America can put together the coalition to defeat them. And I mean, we have to lead from the front. And that does mean more airstrikes. It's going to require some special operators. We're going to have to improve our intelligence gathering capability. But we either deal with ISIS now, or we'll be dealing with them for the next 50 years. And they're going to grow more powerful and more difficult to, you know, to defeat. You know what? I, I want to see a transition warfare-wise. And you're, you're on the Senate Intelligence Committee, and you see things that I don't see, but I can only imagine. You know, when we were going door to door in Iraq and, and we were watching, we didn't even have in the beginning up armored Humvees, for example. Can we get to a point where modern warfare does not include our troops on the ground going door to door, you know, driving Humvees over? you know, IEDs and getting their legs blown Well, off. it depends on the Can conflict. transition? I mean, it depends on the conflict. Ultimately, you have to defeat a ground force with a ground force. Now, does it have to be made up primarily of Americans? No. I think there's a consensus now that you're only going to be able to defeat a radical Sunni movement like ISIS with Sunni Arabs themselves who defeat them, who reject them ideologically and defeat them militarily. But that will not happen without us. And they're going to need special operators embedded alongside them. They're going to need our air force and our airstrikes, our intelligence and our logistical support. But they will have to be defeated on the ground. Do you, you can't see a transition, them. though? Modern warfare, will it tra change? Sure, of course, and it already is. And again, that involves investment. I mean, if you're not investing money, and, you know, the, the investments we're making now is what determines the options our commander-in-chief will have in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you stop making those investments because of these defense reductions, you're not going to have the 21st mm -hmm. century tools necessary, not just to defeat ISIS, but to deal with what China's doing with asymmetrical warfare, mm -hmm. what the Russians are expanding, the missile threat from North Korea and from Iran. I mean, all these things need to be dealt with. One of the big issues that came up tonight was the issue of immigration. You had it out a little bit with Ted Cruz and you had it out a little bit with Governor Bush. Um, you're very clear. You have said something to me a long time ago that the American people have spoken loudly and they don't want comprehensive immigration reform, and That's you right. agree with them. Yeah, I do. Look, I want to solve problems. I want to solve the immigration issue. I live the immigration issue. My parents, my grandparents were immigrants. I live in a community of immigrants. You cannot solve it comprehensively. People keep talking about common sense approach. There will be no common sense approach. There will be no consensus until you prove to people illegal immigration is under control. Here's what the American people are saying. We're prepared to deal with the problem we have now. Not criminals, they can't stay. Not sanctuary cities, they can't get their money, but we're prepared to deal with the problem we have now, but not until you can prove to us this is never going to happen again. And right now, that's not happening. And you're saying secure the border first yes. and then let the American people decide what to do with those people that are sure, here. Sure, we're not going to impose a solution. We're, I don't believe we're going to round up and deport 12 million people. We're also not going to hand out 12 million citizenship cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it, there has to be a process that makes sense for America, but we're not going to do it through executive order like this president's done. We'll see what the American people are willing to support, but only after, it won't be amnesty. I do not support amnesty. Mm -hmm. And only after 
we bring our immigration issue under control once and for all. You, you really came in prepared to challenge both Governor Bush and Ted Cruz on this issue. Because I would argue that in many ways you've taken the heat because you were part of the comprehensive immigration yeah, bill. And, and that came up on both sides today. Sure. And you were saying to both well, of them. First of all, they, Jeb has changed his position on this. He supported yeah. citizenship and now he does it. And that's fine. It looked a complex issue. Everybody on that stage has at one moment or another adjusted their tactics because this is an evolving issue. With Ted, I like Ted very much. You know, Ted is my friend. We serve in the Senate together. That means you'll personal. team up together maybe? Well, I think we both want to win. So, <laughs> But this is not about Ted yeah. personally. But Ted does have this uh, thing going on in his campaign where he portrays himself as the only principled conservative. On the issue of immigration, he did, in fact, support legalization. You saw it in the videos tonight. Uh, Megan pointed that out. He did. If he's changed his mind, then just say you changed your mind. But don't go around, as Rand Paul said, pretending you're the only one that's pure on this. He's trying to, out -tr he's trying to trump Trump on immigration, and, and that's just not going to work. What do you think happening now on the Democratic side? You got polls showing that, that Hillary Clinton is losing here in Iowa, losing in New Hampshire. You keep read one report after another, day after day from the intelligence inspector general, for example, dozens and dozens of emails that were beyond the top secret uh, security clearance level. Are these indictable offenses, do you think? Well, if in fact, I can just tell you this. Let me just say this, because I don't want to politicize this since the FBI is still looking at it. But if someone on my staff were to remove intelligence information and put it on their private server, they would be fired and they would be indicted, in my opinion, or charged. Mm -hmm. No one is above the law. And what's happening? The Democratic Party is being taken over by the radical left. There are no moderate Democrats left. None. It has become that. a radical left party. That's why Bernie Sanders is doing so well in the polls. And that's why Hillary Clinton is chasing him in that direction. And she didn't have to move far. She was already pretty left-wing on many of her ideas, and that's why I know I'm going to beat her. We are going to be able to go out to millions of Americans who perhaps haven't voted for conservatives in the past and convince them that conservatism is not just right for them, it's right for America. You've done well in matchups head-to-head with her. I'll beat Hillary Clinton. They know that, Sean. That's why Hillary Clinton spent so much time attacking me. Yeah. They spent so much time attacking me. They know that if I'm our nominee, I will win, and that's why I'm asking the people of Iowa to go on my website, marcorubio.com, learn all about my campaign, and then vote for me at the caucuses Monday night because if I'm our nominee, I will unite this party and we will defeat Hillary Clinton. Uh, most important question beyond national security, and, and I thought you really were passionate about that tonight, is the economy. You know, looking so people here tonight, people are out of work, people are in poverty, you know, our debt is now doubled. The Obama economy. The Obama economy. How long does it take to turn that around? Well, I believe free enterprise could turn it around. It's, it's amazing to me that businesses are still hiring people given all the weight that's on them from this government. Mm -hmm. I think this economy is poised to take off. I I really do. I think the opportunities of the 21st century economy are extraordinary. They're being held back mm -hmm. by the Obama policies that undermine free enterprise. If we could remove that, roll back regulations, make our tax code just a normal one, get the EPA off people's back, show you have a plan for the debt, fully utilize your energy resources, more vocational training. We need more welders and plumbers and pipe fitters. This economy is going to take off. It'll be the envy of the world again, and our children will be the freest and the most prosperous Americans that have ever lived. You excited? We're finally here. Yeah, I sure am. Well, this is the sixth debate, uh, and uh, what, now, if you go back to CPAC last March, it's been a full year? It has. And, yeah. uh, you know, in just 93 hours, 92 hours, people here in Iowa, if you're watching in Iowa tonight, you're going to go caucus. Mm. You're going to have the first chance of any Americans to answer the question, what comes after Barack Obama? I'm asking for your vote. I'll win. I'll beat Hillary Clinton. I'll unite this party. We'll turn this country around. Senator, great to see you. Great so, job. Thanks, thanks Appreciate it. Thank thanks, you very much.